We've had chickens for quite a few years now and there's been so many ups and so many downs while having them. So today I'm going to talk about some of the mistakes we've made with our backyard chickens and some of the mistakes that you might make as well. I didn't think I was going to be filming today because it's snowmageddon. Snow is still coming down so hopefully the camera is going to be all right. <laughs> we'll find out. The very first mistake we're talking about today is before you even think about getting chickens, check the zoning for your area. I've talked about this before, but I'm going to say it again. Not everywhere is just okay with chickens or okay with as many chickens as you want. There's different rules and regulations depending on where you live. Here where I live, when we bought the house, there was chickens back here in the corner and they had about 10 chickens and they had their own little coop set up and everything back there. Well, after a couple years of living here, we had we had some neighbors call the city on us <laughs> and the city came out and they weren't really happy with our coop setup. This whole time we thought we were within regulation, we thought we were okay, but we didn't check the rules and regulations before we had our chickens, even though they were here before we were. That was our own fault. We ended up changing some things up to get within regulation and now we're completely legal. But this isn't a mistake that you wanna make because you spend all this money on your coop, on your chickens, on all this stuff. So you don't wanna have the city come tell you later that you can't have them or you can't have them the way that you have them it can get pretty expensive pretty quick and that's a whole lot of just work trying to change everything after it's already done <laughs> before you go to get your chicks make sure you plan ahead because it's pretty easy to get to the store where you have your chicks to see all the chicks and just ha kind of have a cuteness overload and just end up shoving your pockets completely full with chicks just to get home and realize that you don't have enough room for those chicks chicken math is a very real thing and it's pretty easy to start with two to four chicks and end up with 12 to 14 chicks. You'd be pretty surprised at, at how easily it is to have way too many chickens. It's kind of hard to tell you a flat, flat out number of how many square feet you need per bird or how many square feet in the run you need per bird. But the general consensus is that inside your coop, the birds need roughly four square feet per bird. And then out in the run, they need four to eight square feet. Now this is obviously dependent on the breed of chicken that you have. If you had, have some bantam breeds, you need a little bit less space. If you have some of the larger breeds, you might need a little bit more space. This is also dependent on are your chickens free range? Because if your chickens are free ranging, it's, it's, you can get away with a little bit less space in the coop because they have all day to hang out outside. With us, we kind of do a mixture. We have the chickens in the run, but then we also let them get outside and roam around and just forage out in the logs and all sorts of stuff. So we do kind of a, a little hybrid situation here, but just keep in mind, you want minimum four square feet inside your coop and four to eight square feet outside of your coop per bird. So when you go to get your chicks, make sure you are planning for that and don't come home with too many chicks. Medicated chick starter grower is normally what everybody uses right when they get their baby chicks. And this is great. This is what you should be using. The medicated chick starter grower, it has higher protein and lower calcium than a normal layer feed. You're getting extra protein to kind of grow those chicks as fast as possible. And you're also not giving them that calcium because they don't need it yet. They're not producing eggs. The issue a lot of people run into right here is they don't stop feeding that chick grower feed when they should. They kind of keep giving it to them because they still have a bag left. They're just kind of trying to get rid of it. Without that extra calcium in the chick starter grower, the when they're actually ready to start laying eggs, they don't have the calcium they need to produce those eggs. A general rule of thumb is after about 18 weeks or after you get your first egg, switch over from the medicated chick starter grower and start feeding your birds some layer feed. On the other side of things, some people just kind of skip over the starter grower and they go straight to the layer pellets and this can cause issues. What happens is you're giving a lot of calcium and less protein to your chicks, so they're not gonna grow as fast. But the biggest problem with this is you're giving them just a ton of calcium and their bodies can't handle that calcium. They can't, they can't work it through their system. So what happens is that calcium builds up and builds up and they have no way of getting rid of that calcium like the adult birds do with the eggs. So make sure when you get your chicks, start them on that medicated chick starter grower. And then after about 18 weeks or your first egg, go ahead and transition them over to a good layer feed. <laughs> the fourth thing we're talking about here today are heat lamps. I will be the very first person to admit that this heat lamp came directly out of my chicken coop a couple years back. I still have it, but we don't use it. And there's some good reasoning why we don't use our heat lamps. Chickens do not need it's so cold, but I'm so hot. Chickens don't need heat lamps, and it's actually pretty dangerous to give them heat lamps. And the reason for that is heat lamps get really, really hot, right? And the chickens have all sorts of dander and dust and feathers, and everything that is flammable is inside your coop, just 
floating around in there. All it takes is one bird to fly up and hit that lamp to break it, or one little feather to hit that lamp to ignite, and your entire chicken coop can burn to the ground with your chickens in it. It's not worth it. Another bad thing with heat lamps is what happens if your power goes out? If your power goes out, your birds go from having this perfectly heated little coop to freezing cold in the winter, and they don't have time to acclimate. Chickens are totally fine in the winter without a heat lamp. What happens is they slowly get used to that colder and colder weather, and they build up their, their down, and they build up their feathers, and they, they build up a resistance to that cold. They're totally fine in the cold. So heat lamps, just they're, they're not something you need. I know that a lot of people use them, and especially in the past, I think it's starting to kind of transition now to where less people are using heat lamps. So be one of those people that are, that are not using heat lamps. And now I'm gonna step off of my, my pedestal here. Okay, <laughs> thank you. It's just so cold and so snowy. This is the biggest snowstorm we've had in years. We ended up going outside to clear all the snow from out front, played with all the dogs, and then it's been snowing, and I didn't think I was gonna film. And today's the last day I can film to get the video out on time. <laughs> I'm happy I'm out here. I'm happy you're watching. And if you're enjoying this video, go hit the like button and that just kind of tells YouTube that you enjoyed the video. But only hit it if you're actually enjoying this video. I appreciate it. The sixth thing we're talking about today is lack of ventilation. You want to make sure that your chicken coop is really well ventilated. During the summer, they need the ventilation to kind of clear out the air and keep it nice and cool inside their coop, or at least as cool as it can be. But what a lot of people don't know is during the winter, ventilation is equally as important. What tends to happen if there isn't adequate ventilation in your chicken coop is those chickens will sit there and breathe and breathe and it adds con condensation inside of your coop and that condensation creates moisture and moisture is the number one thing that's going to 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 give your birds frostbite or to get them sick or sometimes it can even be fatal if they are too wet in the winter so going back to heat lamps you don't need heat lamps to keep your birds warm you need to keep your birds dry and draft free and that's what's going to keep them warm during the winter so when you're looking at your ventilation for your chicken coop put the vents up above where the chickens are roosting at night. So that way the, the draft is coming above their heads, but it's still gonna be drying out that chicken coop all winter long. So that way they can stay really, really dry and really, really warm. Unlike me right now, there are all kinds of ways to do ventilation. For us, we just put a bunch of three inch holes and we put a good mesh there on the three inch hole. So that way nothing can get in or out of those holes. And that way it still gives some good ventilation across the coop. We actually made a video about us doing the ventilation in this coop. So I will put that down in the description below and you can go watch it if you'd like. Number seven oh, is gonna be getting a rooster when they're not needed. There are no stupid questions. And one of the biggest questions that people get with keeping chickens is, do I need a rooster? for my hens to produce eggs? And the answer is a big resounding no, you don't. Some places won't even allow you to have roosters. Here at my house, we aren't allowed to have roosters or crowing hens. <laughs> and we get plenty of eggs here. Honestly, roosters can become pretty aggressive and downright <laughs> So they aren't for everybody. But there are a couple things that <laughs> roosters are great for. And that is hatching your own chicks. They fertilize your eggs so that way you can hatch your own chicks. Your chickens will lay eggs no matter what, but if you have a rooster in the flock, those eggs can actually produce chicks for you. Another thing that roosters are good for is protecting your flock. So they aren't useless. There's actually really good uses for them, but they aren't for everybody. So just make sure if you are thinking about getting a rooster, don't do it because you want your hens to lay eggs and make sure you do your research on what it takes to keep a rooster. Number eight is predator proofing. Do not skimp out on your predator proofing. When we first bought this house, like I said, we had the chicken coop that was already set up in the corner. That coop was not properly secured. It was not ready for predators. And we were just getting into the chicken world, so we didn't really understand that it wasn't adequate. And just over that fence there behind me, that wooden fence, is a four acre goat farm. And this goat farm attracts a lot of raccoons. And those raccoons ended up getting to our chickens. And it wasn't just once, it wasn't just twice, it happened five, six, seven times. We were hearing the raccoons come late at night, we would have to chase them off, and we really didn't know what to do. We didn't know how to fix that situation. We ended up tearing that coop completely down, that run completely down, and starting over from scratch, so that way we can keep our chickens safe and not lose any more birds because we lost a lot of them. There are videos all over YouTube that, that talk about how to predator-proof your chicken coop. I, I don't think we have any yet, but we will eventually. 
There's videos everywhere about it. Make sure you watch those videos and properly secure your coop. Here we have so many things that want to eat our birds. We've got raccoons and skunks and we have a cougar and we have hawks and we have all these different things that want to eat our birds and it's our job and our responsibility to make sure that that, that can't happen. Another thing you can do is make sure that you are closing your, your chicken door at night because a lot of these predators, at least here with the, the skunks and the raccoons, they come out at night. So as soon as the sun goes down, they're going to be out looking for food. And what you can do is you can close the door to your chicken coop. And most of the time it's easier to secure a chicken coop than it is to secure a chicken run. So secure your chicken coop at night, make sure you close that door to make it really easy. You can also get an automatic chicken door, which we have on our coop. We have a Chikosi automatic chicken door. It's a super awesome chicken door. We made a video about that. I will put that in the link in the description below. And I'll also put a link for that door in the description below because it, it's pretty awesome. You set the time that you want it to open and close and it just kind of does it automatically for you. You don't have to worry about it. Number nine is providing constant access to fresh water. Eggs are made up of, I think it's 74% water and the chickens need that water to produce the eggs. And if you don't provide them with constant access to water, they won't provide you with eggs. If you go even one day without giving them water, there's the potential that they just won't lay eggs the next day and you can see that that correlation pretty quickly in the summer it's pretty easy to do this we have a five gallon bucket that we put little call them chicken nipples <laughs> i think that might be actually what they call they're called but that's definitely what i call them they're little chicken nipples and the birds just kind of peck at it and it gives them the water those are perfect and we actually i think we have a video on that too i will put that in the description below but the chicken nipples are great. You can hook them to big barrels, you can hook them to buckets, you can hook them to PVC, and it gives you a way of giving them a lot of water and not having to fill it up every day. In the winter, it becomes a little bit more difficult. Like right now, obviously, it is frozen out here. It's, it's really frozen out here. And we have to come outside at least once a day, sometimes two, three times a day. We have to dump out their water and refill their water so that way we can keep kind of keep up with that, that water supply in the winter. The chicken nipples don't work in the winter because they freeze up. I have heard that if you put a heater inside of the bucket that your chicken nipples are on, that the nipples don't freeze up and they work just fine. It's something that I definitely want to try but I haven't yet <laughs> it's gonna happen so for now I just kind of uh, come out here two or three times a day and dump it and refill it make sure your birds have water it's really important <clears throat> number 10 is not utilizing them to eat your chickens is not you number 10 <laughs> number 10 is not utilizing them to eat your kitchen scraps. People send so much waste to landfill every year and a giant chunk of that waste is actually kitchen scraps, things that don't need to be in the landfill. And what our chickens absolutely love is most of those kitchen scraps. And the cool thing about this is you have all these kitchen scraps, right? You give them to your chickens and then they digest all those kitchen scraps and they turn it into poop. And then that poop is in your chicken run and your chicken coop and it kind of collects there and then you collect their poop i know it sounds gross but just stay with me here <laughs> you collect their poop and you compost their poop and you turn it into fertilizer and this fertilizer is some of the best fertilizer you can possibly have for your garden it's amazing stuff but it has to be composted you can't just take your chicken poop and just kind of like catch it out of your chicken and put it on your plant it doesn't work like that you need to make sure that you <laughs> that you take the chicken poop and compost it down first and then put it on your plants and your plants are going to thank you for it and then the cool thing about that is you put that fertilizer on your plants in your garden and you grow more food to eat more food in your house to create more more kitchen scraps and then you take those kitchen scraps and you you give it back to your birds and it's just kind of an endless cycle and it's great here at our house there is nothing that we take from the kitchen like scraps like food scraps we don't take anything and put it in the garbage everything goes to either the chickens or the goats almost everything there are a few things that are poisonous to chickens and just not good for them to eat at all and it can actually be fatal to them and if you want to know more about that go watch this video right here we talk all about the different kinds of kitchen scraps you can give your birds what they enjoy what is healthy for them what they're not going to eat or what is just unhealthy or even fatal for them. So go watch that video there if you're interested in seeing what you can give your chickens and what you can't. So go watch that video and we'll have fun there too. I'll see you there.